Good morning. I just love seeing all these smiling faces in here this morning. It just uh, brightens up the room, doesn't it? And uh, not only that, the presence of the Lord is what brightens up the room. A um, few announcements this morning are uh, our usual uh, ladies' prayer meeting at 10 on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, 6 o'clock prayer meeting, 6.30, The Edge, the student ministries. Remember these in prayer and remember to be here for those Friday. Um, freedom on the outside, 7, 7 to 9. Saturday, we've got a full week this week, don't we? Saturday, Easter egg hunt. I know everybody's excited about that. Uh, Brother Lee's already funded a prize egg for us. Amen. Amen. Off limits to adults. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there. Just going to throw that out there now. Yes. An adult who has a child in the Easter egg don't, can't know where the eggs are going. That's right. That's right. Because I know, I know there's, there's... Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll have a designated uh, prize egg hider, and that person will be unknown to everybody else. We might not even tell that person that they're hiding that egg. How about that? They won't even know. We'll, fi we'll figure it out. But it's going to be fun. That's from 1 to 3 on Saturday. Uh, there'll be... Uh, 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 lunch and some snacks and stuff too as well so come out and enjoy that uh, Sunday Easter Sunday amen amen come on amen Easter Sunday Easter Sunday we got to get ready for that and today's Palm Sunday I didn't even realize that until I walked in this morning and Josh put this on the screen I'm like oh wow that's right it is Palm Sunday it's Passion Week so, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on all week, not just here, but um, in other churches and, and all, around, uh, all around the world. A lot of people get into the Passion Week and celebrating the entire week. So let's just remember that this week as we go into Passion Week and start today. And just remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Has he been good to y'all this week? Yes. Amen. Amen. He has. He's been, I think he's been great to everybody this week. So. Let's just worship him and praise them his, this morning, okay? Praise the Lord. Can you come on and stand in the house this morning? Do you know that you're beautiful in the sight of the Lord? Do you know that you're beautiful in the sight of our Mercy Church of God? <laughs> we are glad you're here today. Look to your neighbor this morning and say, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're here. I want you to worship this morning and invite the presence of the Lord into this house give him all the glory this is resurrection week and we want to resurrect in the new beginnings of the lord today come on put your hands together let's give the lord a mighty praise in the house mighty mighty god holy holy god glorious in power we've gathered to praise your name Oh, yeah. 
Jesus run into it when they are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it when they are saved. Say, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. run into it and they are saved the name of the Lord is the strong tower the righteous run into it and they are saved blessed be blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord blessed be the name of the Lord most high. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Most high. Hallelujah. We bless your name today, Jesus. haven't changed my mind about serving the Lord. That old song says, when I bow before him at his throne, praise God. Are you looking forward to that day? I am. You know, the word of God says that we'll have a new name in heaven. We'll be known as we are known, but we'll have a new name written down in glory. Every child of God 
glory. Hallelujah. What a day that's come over here. Thank you, Jesus. morning. Robin, testify today for the name of Jesus. Lord, I just praise you right now. I thank you, Lord, for this day. And God, I just want to thank you, God, for the people that are coming from the north, south, east, and west. And Father, I just want to thank you, Father, God, for a prayer request, God, that we prayed. And this man back here was healed. They said they bypassed. Stand up. Stand up, sir. Stand up. Everett. Brother girl. Come on, stand up. Y'all give him a praise in the house. He, he They literally said that it bypassed, his heart bypassed, did the on his own bypass in the name of Jesus. So we're going to see more of that. 
It says if you ask, you shall receive. It says seek, you shall find. It says knock, and I'll open unto you. It said ask anything in my name, and it shall, and it will be done. It said you had to have a faith of a mustard seed. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? It's little. It's little. So today, he can set you free. He can deliver you. He can fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you don't know Jesus, ask, you shall receive him. Right now, in the name of Jesus, it's that easy. God, God didn't come in a manger. He come in a mansion. He come in a manger to make it simple for us to come to him. So today, call upon his name. Why call this all? Come on, praise him in the house this morning. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. I'll worship in the day. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Jesus for 
darkness over every enemy. In Jesus, for my family, I speak the holy name. Over every enemy, in Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name, Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name. just worship him. You would just take time to invite him into this place. He is here on a mission today. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, he knows your need. I know there is peace within your presence. In his presence. I speak Jesus. Worshiping the Lord this morning, Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus. 
Father, I lay hands on my sister in Jesus' mighty name. I speak to that sugar diabetes in the name of Jesus. And I thank you. I speak the name of Jesus to be normal, to go down in the name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. God, I keep praying for Dylan. I pray for my brother in Jesus' Jesus name, God. Just to keep doing the work in his life. Holy Ghost. And Caitlin and that precious child she's carrying, God. Oh, God, and their daughter, God. Just bless them, Lord. Bless them, God. Their son, Lord, just bless them, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray restoration, 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 restoration. The restoring blood of Jesus, the power in the blood of Jesus. And God, I continue to pray for Everett in Jesus' yes, name. Lord, thank you, Jesus. That you keep doing a miracle in my brother, God, in Jesus' name. God, only you can do a real bypass in Jesus' name. And thank you that you did it for him, God, in the name of Jesus. What a miracle. Sing it again, Elizabeth. Your sing. name is power. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Your name Lord. is healing. Yes, sing Your God. name is power. perfect gentleman we welcome you here thank you thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord just stay in a spirit of worship you may be seated this morning God bless you thank you thank you guys his name. Thank you, Lord. Y'all, he's alive. Yes. He's alive. on that cross for us. How could we ever repay them? Oh my goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is so good. Thank you, Lord. You're good. to hear. 
My message this morning is not one that is going to necessarily make you shout and jump over pews, run around the church. Eh, if you want to do that, that's fine. Not a problem. But it's a hard sermon. It was hard for me to put together. And I'm going to preach you the truth. Amen. I'm going to preach you the truth. I'm going to preach you the word. And just my title alone absolutely chokes me up. The restoring power of the blood of Jesus. So powerful. So powerful. Heavenly Father, speak through me. I yield myself afresh to you as best I know how, God. I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit. Speak through me, God. Have your word, have your way, have your will in our lives. In the name of Jesus, that your people will hear the word and be blessed. In Jesus' name, if you receive that, say amen. Please, please, praise God. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, the Bible says, Make you perfect in every good work to do His will, working in you. I love that. Working in you that which is well-pleasing in His sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Ever. Somebody say amen. In Revelation chapter 12. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Whoo, Lord God. Now is come salvation. My friend, salvation has come to us now. Now. And strength in the kingdom of our God. And the power of his of his Christ, of his might, I think is what that literally should say. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. The accuser, the devil, he does all he can to accuse you. But the Bible tells us, in Revelation 12, 11, in the 11th verse, it talks about the accuser of the brethren. And you know this verse. It's not up there, but you know it. And we overcame him, the accuser, by the blood of the Lamb and the words of our what? Testimony. That's it. That's how you overcome Satan is by your words of what God has done for you and nobody else. Amen. I want to talk to you about this morning about the restoring power of the blood of Jesus. God made the first covenant of blood, <coughs> excuse me, with Adam. And when Adam and Eve had sinned, he shed the blood of an animal to cover their nakedness with that skin, but it was also a covenant that he made. Follow me. Pay attention to me. You're going to want this. He made a covenant as well with Noah. The rainbow is a sign that has been kidnapped by our society it is not a sign to promote the LGBTQ, LMNOP, QRST, whatever they want to be. It is not that. It has been hijacked by our society. And Noah, it was given to Noah as a covenant that he would, God would never, ever, ever destroy or abandon the human race. Amen. Amen. Every time I riding in a rainstorm and I see a rainbow, I say, thank you, Lord. 
People look at me, man, that man's on cocaine. Yes, Jesus, cocaine, praise God. Thank you, Lord, when I see a rainbow. Every time you see a rainbow, you need to say, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Let me move on. Abraham had a covenant with God. He would split animals down the middle, and God would come down as a flame of fire in Genesis 15 as he would walk down the blood as he would pronounce blessings on a man named, man named Abraham. It was a blood bath. It was bad. I had a preacher one time, uh, a member of my church rather years ago, so Lee, all you talk about is the blood. Yes! Yes! Without the blood, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Yes, I said blood, 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 blood. Amen. Well, he didn't have much say after that, praise God. I said, you better, I'm a blood preacher, praise God. Hallelujah. And this is what God did in Genesis 15 when Abraham would split literally cut an animal in half, open it up, and God would come and make a covenant in that blood. Moses made a covenant with God. It's called the everlasting covenant. Why? Because the New Testament is not where Jesus started the new covenant. I knew I'd get your attention on that. I want you to think. Think beyond what you were brought up to think and look at the Word. God had a counsel with Himself before earth was ever formed. And God in the counsel of heaven with Himself and said that before the foundation of the earth would be laid the Lamb of God that would be slain. And the Scripture says... Before the foundation of the world, God made a covenant with Himself before He made one with Adam, Noah, and Abraham. Sorry, I'm crying so much my nose is running. Praise God. Or anyone else. He said, I have already established this. It is fixed. I know what Adam's going to do. I know what Adam's going to do. He said, I've already established it. I know what Abraham's going to do. I already know what David's going to do when he looks at that woman and gets messed up. I already know this. I know exactly what he's going to do. But my covenant is everlasting, is an everlasting covenant. And I'm not starting it with man. I'm starting it with my own counsel in heaven. This is what God did before the earth was ever created. And I say, and I said, let there be. I'm going to establish that I am the Lamb of God that will come in human form who will shed my blood and establish my everlasting covenant, my blood to the world. Amen. So, so create, God created Adam out of the mud of the ground. If you look in the original Greek and Hebrew, that's what Adam literally means. Mud man. Dirt. Honey, and let me tell you, from dirt we came to dirt we're going. Trust me. God looked at his reflection in the water and saw his own likeness and image and molded and made Adam in his image. Genesis 2-7, Adam was lying there with no life in him. There was no life in him at all. Then God breathed into Adam, and Adam became a living soul. That's when Adam got 
the blood. That's when Adam got the blood, when God breathed into the nostrils of Adam. So where, where did Adam get his blood? He had no parents. He had no mother. He had no father. Therefore, Adam had no navel. I knew y'all would love that. I just had to throw that in. Praise God. I don't know why I said that. Praise God. Anyway, praise God. But it's true. Think about it. Adam and Eve didn't have a navel. Do whatever you want to with that. I don't care. Praise God. So God breathed into Adam, and Adam became that living soul. Where did he get the blood from? When God breathed into Adam, God's very breath going into Adam created the blood that started flowing in his veins. Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11. For the life of the flesh is what? In the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Jesus is called the second Adam. Adam, because, the second Adam, because the blood that was in Adam was the blood God gave to Jesus. Listen to me. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. He was perfect. He was sinless. He was immortal. He was like unto God. Adam was. And he had blood, the blood of God in him. And he had the breath of God. He was so supernatural. He could, he could run just... Uh, Historians have said that he could run around planet earth. He was so supernatural at the speed of light. This was the breath and the blood of God that literally housed, lived inside of Adam. He was supernatural. I love it. The blood made Adam's flesh alive, but the breath of God made his soul and his spirit come alive. Adam and Eve fell to sin, but he did not lose his blood. He lost the breath of God in his soul. He did not die physically because the blood is what gives the flesh life. But his spirit became dead to God because of the sin he, he committed. So when Adam and Eve began to reproduce after their own kind, Cain and Abel, you know this, were born without the breath of God on their blood. Cain and Abel were born of a mother and father without the breath of God on their blood, in their blood. They were born with physical blood, born without the spirit and breath of God on them. Their spirit was dead. They are not of the nature of God, but they were of the nature of Adam. Hang in there. Let's move forward now some 6,000 years after God created Adam. The Holy Spirit says, I know the first Adam failed, but the time is right. The Holy Spirit said the time is right. And he found a little girl by the name of Mary. He found a little virgin girl by the name of Mary. In Luke 135, it tells us, And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And God breathed into her His breath into her system into her womb, into her spirit, again on planet earth. Again on planet earth. 
First it was done in Adam, and now it's being done in Jesus. The baby she's carrying, the baby she's carrying cannot have Adam's blood. Cannot have a man's blood. Cannot have that DNA. The baby she's carrying can't have Joseph's blood because she's a virgin. She cannot have the blood of Joseph from the seed of Joseph. She, the baby she's carrying cannot have Mary's blood. Cannot. He's got to have God's blood. Whew. Jesus gets his blood from his father. I'm not talking about hemoglobin, not talking about that. I'm not talking about type A, type B, none of that. When I talk about the red material stuff, I'm talking about the blood of Jesus is the breath of God inside Jesus. Mm. Jesus has the same blood God breathed into Adam. He was born alive unto God the moment he took his first breath. And he carried that blood until he became 33 years of age and he, became, and he began, he shed that blood. Jesus bled from his body seven different places. And I'm going to talk about this and then we're going to show you some things on that. The first time he shed his blood was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Look at Luke 22, 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was as it were drops of blood falling to the ground. When his sweat became as drops of blood, he prayed so hard to his father that he went to the ground with the drops of blood dripping off his brow and dripping off his nose, bending over in prayer to God. The second time Jesus shed his blood was when they dragged him from the garden to Caiaphas' house. Isaiah 50 and verse Six. Look at that. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Think about it. They literally pulled his beard off of his face, exposing raw meat and muscle. The, the third time... He shed his blood, was in Pilate's home. Look in Matthew 27 and 24. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, in other words, he wasn't getting anywhere with this, but rather a tumult was made. He took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Pilate didn't want anything to do with it. He didn't want anything to do with it. He said, I see no fault in him. I'm washing my hands of this situation. But when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he commanded that Jesus be whipped with the cat of nine tails. He bled from his back. The fourth time, the fourth place Jesus shed his blood from his body was when they crammed the crown of thorns on his head. John chapter 19 and verse Two, look at this. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it. This is a very sweet King James version of it. But they didn't just put it on there. They crammed that thorn down into the skull and brain matter of his head. And they put it, put on a purple robe on him in order to show you're the king. You're of royalty. Look at you, look at you. They were mocking him. The fifth time, the fifth place Jesus shed his blood was when they took him to the cross. Mark 15, 24. And when they laid, they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them. What every man should take. When they had crucified him, they laid him on that cross. They stretched his hands on that cross 
and they drove the nails in his hands. That blood began to speak. That blood began to drip. That blood began to soak the earth that was under him. The sixth time Jesus shed his blood was when they pierced his feet. Look at Mark 15, 24. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. Again, that same verse. They pierced his feet. And the seventh time was when they shoved a Roman razor sharp spear into his side. And out came blood and water. John 19 and 34, as you see there. It was a bloody trail on the Via Della Rosa all the way to Calvary. And here's where I've been trying to get to this morning, my friend. I'm finally getting to what I want to do and what I want to preach to you. Every time, oh God, speak through me. Every time he shed his blood on every one of those occasions, he did something for you and he did something for me. Every time on one of those occasions, every time he bled in all those locations on his body, he began to bleed the breath of God. And the voice of God began to cry out on behalf of you and on behalf of me so that you and I would not have to spend eternity in hell separated from the presence of God forever. Whew. Here we go. The first time that Jesus shed his blood, it was for the healing of my will. Glory to when he was in the garden of Gethsemane on his knees crying. He began to cry because my will, my friend, is not willing and wanting to be willing to do the will of God. Yet Jesus was saying, God, for them, not my will, but thine be done. And my friend, I don't know about you, but sometimes my will just does not want to bend to the will of what God's asking me to do. My desires are not like his desires. When he shed his blood in the garden, he did so, so that my will could line up with his will. Kneeling and praying in the garden of Gethsemane. You see, you know you can tell when someone is saved. Because when you're saved, you want to go to church. You hadn't got to get your wife to beg you and beg you and beg you. Oh, honey, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. No, when you really know God, you want to be in the presence of God. Good Lord, have mercy. Oh. You want to come and worship. You just want to be around it. Well, I can't raise my hands yet. That's okay. You will eventually. I guarantee you. Woo! It's just one day, oh, Lord, I raised my hand, you know. Where'd that come from? By being in the very presence of worship. Amen. Praise God. You see, he shed his blood the first time to heal my will. Secondly, he shed his blood for the healing of my image. His beard was literally pulled off his face. His face was marred as if a, a bulldog had mauled him and chewed on him. His face was torn. He looked like some kind of half-devoured animal. They ripped off his beard. His blood speaks. His blood speaks. You see, 
people are destroying themselves because of the image of themselves. They hate themselves. They've made bad choices. Who hasn't? Been there, done that. I got a bigger t-shirt than all of you. They got a bad self-image about themselves because they've made bad choices. And Jesus said, I'll let my beard be plucked off to heal the image that you have of yourself so that you can walk in healing and be proud of what God has created in your life. Hallelujah. Then they took him to Pilate and his back was whipped with the cat of nine tails. He shed his blood by the beating of his body. It says, historians tell us that the Roman soldiers, they were mean guys. They were, they were just probably 6'3", 6'4", 260 pound men, specially trained in combat and beating prisoners. It says that they literally wore themselves out beating Jesus with a cat of nine tails. Oh God. He shed his blood and took that for the healing of our body. For the healing of my body in Jesus' mighty name. These Roman soldiers were crude. They were rude, mean men. And they wore themselves out whipping Jesus. Isaiah 53, 5 tells us that. Read it for yourself sometimes. When Jesus shed his blood... He shed his blood for my healing. Mm. God, help us to get our faith back. We need to start believing for healing. Our Mercy Church of God, we need to start believing for signs and wonders. I'm tired of regular church. I want some miracles. I want some healing. I want God moving in people's lives. In the name of Jesus, somebody give God a hand clap in this place. Oh, God. I want to see cancer healed dead in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Deformities healed in Jesus' name. Supernatural heal, uh, healings in Jesus' name. Honey, we need more than a head knowledge that He did it then. The blood is still speaking. The blood is still crying out. With His stripes ye were, what? Healed. Guarantee you. Oh my God. It heals your will. The blood heals your image. The blood heals your body. And when they crammed the crown of thorns on his head, he bled for the healing of my mind. Oh, God. So I don't have to live in fear. I don't have to live in depression. I don't have to live in anxiety. I don't have to live in panic. I don't have to be on Prozac. I don't have to be suicidal. I don't have to live in despair. I'm not despaired. The mighty one walks with me. Amen. He took that crown on his head for the healing of my mind. And honey, my mind can get so messed up sometimes. Oh God. Thank Him. Thank Him. Let me move on. The fifth, when He took the nails on His hands and they nailed His hands with those rusty, filthy, Roman, pin-sharp nails, Roman nails. His blood was shed for my work. You see, 
you are not just put down here to get ready for the rapture. Shame on us for thinking that. Oh, Brother Lee, I can't wait till the rapture. I'm just waiting. Honey, I'm not ready. There's too much work to be done. There's too many souls to be saved. There's too many cancers that need to get in Jesus' name in people's body. There's too many families that need restoring in Jesus. Nope, I'm not ready for the rapture. If it comes, it does. But it suits me if it doesn't anytime soon. We got grandchildren to see grow up. We've got children to see grow up. We've got work to do. Hallelujah. And he took the nails in his hand for my work. God wants you to be a success. He did not put you here on earth to make a lot of money and be loaded with money and become a big shot so that you could receive all the glory. Didn't do that. He didn't do that. My friend, you have a purpose. God has a place for you. God has a plan for you. Don't just sit around on your laurels waiting for the rapture. Get busy. Get busy. Amen. I'm getting a few amens. Praise the Lord. He has an assignment for you that he has for no one else. His blood is speaking constantly for the healing of your work. Sixthly, then they nailed his feet to the cross for the healing of my walk. Don't ever let anyone tell you, well, that Jesus stuff just don't work, my friend. He can heal your walk. He can make you walk uprightly to be proud. So, Okay, you messed up. Okay, let's move on. Jesus died and took the nails in his feet for your walk so that you could walk uprightly and proud and hold your head up high. Amen. This is serious stuff. Well, I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were a preacher. Yep, you should come and hear me preach sometime. Well, I can't believe you said that. Boy, did you ever mess up. Honey, at least I'm trying to live for God. Amen. At least I'm trying to live for God. Give God a hand clap. It's all about Him. It ain't about me. At least, well, let me say this. Boy, you failed. Honey, you ain't going to believe how good I failed all the time. (laughs) You won't believe it. You won't believe it. I guarantee you. But my friend, at least I've got something worth failing over. Jesus, he's healed my walk. He's healed my walk. He'll pick you up, set you right again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and again. You shouldn't have said that. You messed up. You goofball. What were you thinking? He picks me up again, and again, and again. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you too. The cursor will say, he can't live it. It's it's too far gone. I'm mad. I'm so disappointed. But because Jesus shed his blood from his feet, he will pick me up and get me to walking uprightly again with him. And he'll do it for you. I'm looking at a bunch of y'all. He's done it for. (laughs) We all mess up. Amen. We're all there. Everybody's got a t-shirt. I messed up. Yes. (laughs) 
Oh, Lord. Mm. Yes. No more. Right. No. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yes. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus shed his blood. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself, very timely. From his feet, he will pick me up and walking, helping me walk uprightly again. I'll fail more than you can ever believe. I'll fail. But God. Amen. She just said that. But God. Jesus said, woman, where are your accusers now? But God. They don't accuse you. Neither will I. Glory to God. Give God a hand clap. Yes. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but the blood of Jesus can give you a new walk because of that. Don't you ever say you're walk? Oh, I'm just, I'm just trodden along with you. Don't ever do that. He paid a special price a hard price so that you could walk proud and unashamed. And when Jesus shed his blood from his side and that Roman spear, and he stuck him in the side, Jesus hanging there, pictures today literally are, doesn't give it justice. To completely bring the most humiliation they could. People that were hung on the cross were completely naked, hanging on the cross. Believe me, it was bad. And he did it for us. He took my shame. He took my shame. He took it. When Jesus shed his blood from his side, it was to heal my fellowship with one another. It was my fellowship with God and my fellow man. He healed. He took that spear in his side to heal the fellowship in my marriage, to heal the fellowship in my family, to heal the fellowship with my children, to heal the fellowship with my grandchildren. I keep thinking about you, Danny, on that and how God's done a miracle in that situation. God took that spear to heal us and heal those situations to restore fellowship restore fellowship in my marriage restore fellowship with one the one that has ought against me to restore that fellowship restore healing of my will when he cried out in the garden the healing of my image when his beard was plucked the healing of my body when he was beaten. The healing of my mind when his head was crammed with those crown of thorns. The healing of my work when those nails went through his hands. The healing of my walk when his feet were pierced with those nails. And seven... The healing of my fellowship with the spear in his side.
Just worship him a moment. Just worship him. God, I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. But God, please, please, God, let them realize how loved they are. May their will be bent toward your will. May they begin to have a good self-image of themselves only because of you, Jesus, not because of what Hollywood portrays that we have to look like. No, that's garbage. Help people see the healing of their body has been paid for. They already have it. We are not the sick trying to be healed. We are the healed and the devil is trying to rob us of our healing and bring sickness. Father, let them see that they have the healing of their mind the healing of their work that they put their hands to do on their jobs to bring them blessing and prosperity in their lives. Not that we may hoard things and have all that we uh, want in our lives, God, but so that, God, you can use us to help our fellow man and to be a blessing and to win people to Jesus. Help us, God, to realize that one day that God, their walk with God, that He walks with me, He talks with me, a long life's narrow way. He lives, He lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know He lives. He lives within my heart, and He's walking with me every day. And God, Help them to know that the fellowship is being restored in their home. Fellowship is being restored in their family. Fellowship is being restored once again with their children. Fellowship is being restored once again with grandchildren and relatives who were ticked off about something that happened 12 years ago. But God, you are restoring that fellowship. How? I pray for elevation. For thus saith God this morning, this is the time of elevation for your life. Restoration is about to come into your life. Restoration over your family. Restoration over your home. Restoration over your business. Vindication for your life. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, says the living God. Your mountains will be made low. I will elevate you to new heights in your life if you will just look to me, says God. There will be turnaround and breakthrough for your life. And if you will look to me, says God, thank you, Jesus. What a glorious God we serve. If you look to me, says God, he said, I'll flourish you and I will bring a powerful deposit in your life. I will do the unexpected in your life. I will do the suddenlies in your life. This is the season, says God, of restoration and elevation. I have, if I restore Job's life, I will restore and double what's in your life. For I will protect you, says God. I will guard you, says God. A powerful anointing is coming upon you. Favor is coming upon you. Answers to prayers are coming your way, says the living God. For I will bring the supernatural turnaround for you. This year will be a year of suddenly in your life. So take what belongs to you. The battle that has been won, it's already over. I'm not going to do one more thing. He won it for you. 
take it. Walk in the authority. Walk in that boldness. Walk in that authority, in that courage, in that wisdom. For you are already anointed, says God. Take it. Take it. Take it, saith God. And completely shine to the world around you for my glory. For I am your God. Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Let's all stand together as we receive from him this morning. Thank you so much, God. Thank you. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. The restoring power. There's any need in your heart or your life? Come, let His blood restore you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Whatever you need from heaven, it's here. Yes, Lord. He'll turn that crimson red into white as snow. We receive it from you this morning. Oh, there is healing in the blood. Oh, yes. Absolutely. It's already there. Just take it. Take it. It's there. Take that healing in your body, in your mind, in your emotions, in your will. Take it. from the spear that was pierced in Jesus' side. Bless his walk as his feet, for his feet, God, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Bless the, his back, God, and Tina's back from the stripes that Jesus bore on Calvary, God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. In the blood yes, there are. Oh, Jesus. yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Miracles. There are miracles in the blood. Absolutely. Of Jesus. Absolutely. There are miracles in the blood. Of Jesus. It washes white. 
I've talked with several of you this morning before the service. Miracles have happened in your lives. Just this last week, a 30-second story of what took all week in my life. I was in court. I was in court all week long from 8.30 to 5.30 every day last week. I was being sued for $1.5 million. Nobody knew about it. Nobody knew about it. I began to get certain people to pray. Just, God, have your way. I bumped a lady on a fender in her fender, and she was suing me for $1.5 million. The verdict came in, and I was sitting there. I was crying. I said, oh, God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the verdict came in. The 12 jurors walked back in. We began to pray. We had been praying. Marie, we were, we were just doing everything we could. We were pleading the blood. We were quoting the word, no weapon formed against you so prosper. Honey, when I was there sitting in court, I would write in my book, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed. I was just, I filled the page up quoting that. The verdict came in. The judge looked at the verdict from the jury. Is this your final verdict, jury? Yes, your honor. It is my final verdict. The judge said, according to what is invested in me as superior court judge, Jack Nadrak, you know him, you know him. He said, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, th I thought, dear God, I'm going to have to get me a job at McDonald's or something, part-time or whatever. He said, the defendant may owes the plaintiff zero dollars. Zero dollars. You talk about a miracle. The judge couldn't. He couldn't believe it. Talk about vindication and the power of the blood of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Honey, I sat there. I stood there and I cried in that courtroom. I couldn't believe it. I said, oh God, you've done a miracle. You've done a miracle. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. Do I mess up? <laughs> More than you can imagine. But God. Amen. But God. I'm telling you people, God is a miracle working God. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Amen. I hope you receive something out of this this morning. God bless you. I love you deeply and dearly I want you to do something for me next Sunday brother Teddy's going to be here I want you to love on him I want you to encourage him I want you to wrap your arms around him and Nada is that Nada love on him they're your pastor love on them yes. encourage them welcome them with open arms and more than anything, y'all better pray for them. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Do that for me. Do that for me. Hey, Lee. Yes, sir. Uh, one of our evangelists, Rick Laracy, y'all, yep. if y'all don't know if y'all remember him or not, but yes, uh, he went to the doctor, and uh, he's having to go undergo a triple bypass in his heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, he he gave credit. He said, "I give credit to your dad because." The doctor seen how concerned I was. Yes. And he said, let's just do a stress test. He wasn't feeling anything. He was going about life just fine. And come to find out he needs a triple bypass. Um, so he's given me a link to, you know, because he's going to be out for about 8 to 12 weeks. 
Yeah. But let's just pray before we leave. If y'all would just join me in prayer for him. What's his name this, again? Rick Laracy. Rick Laracy. Jeremy, yeah. lead us in prayer. Dear God, for just him. thank you, Lord, for this man. Dear yes. God, I pray, dear Jesus, that your hand be upon the doctor, sir Lord. Yes. I pray God. that you lead them yes, and that you God. guide them, dear Jesus. Thank yes, you, Lord, God. for directing him, dear Lord, to get checked out. Yes, dear God, God, I pray, dear Jesus, for a complete recovery, yes, a good re- recovery, a fast recovery, dear Lord, healing so that he will not be down for long, dear God, so he can continue to work, dear Jesus, so, yes. that he has started, dear Lord, that you have started in him, dear Jesus. I bless this man. I bless the doctors, dear Lord, and I claim healing over this situation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hug some necks before you leave. You are loved. I love you. See you next week. Baby shower today, 2 o'clock, in the fellowship hall.